Good morning, everyone. For those of you who know me, you may wonder why I'm up here talking about spotted wolfish. Well, I'm a little surprised to be up here, too. I think Megan sent out a survey about a year ago or so, the, along with the rest of the organizers, about this uh, session. And I was the only one to respond about spotted wolf. So here I am, note to self, don't answer any more surveys. But I'm really excited to be up here because uh, wolfish is uh, one of my loves. Actually, when I started graduate school in the 90s, I was looking at Atlantic wolfish aquaculture, realized, oh my god, I'm going to lose all my fingers. I'm going to switch to something more docile. Um, so it's fun to think about wolfish again. Um, but because I have never reared wolfish, let alone spotted wolfish, um, I called up the woman who has and knows a lot, Natalie Lefrancois, my co-author from the Montreal Biodome in Quebec. And so I'm basically just a figurehead up here speaking uh, what she knows, um, but it's opened up a fun collaboration between us. Most people don't know about wolfishes. They are very large. They get this big irregardless of a Fukushima meltdown and radioactivity. Um, they are long-lived, heavy. They yield a fantastic filet um, uh, that is cherished by a lot of um, fish lovers in other countries. There are three wolfish species that uh, we find. Uh, the top one is Atlantic wolfish, which is more predominant in US waters, ranging as far south as New Jersey. The middle one is spotted wolfish, which I'll be focusing on today, which occurs um, somewhat sporadically in the Gulf of Maine waters, but is, is a little bit more of a northern uh, bearing species. And then the last one is northern wolfish, which doesn't have much of a market value. It primarily preys on um, jellyfishes and it has sort of more of a gelatinous flesh. But the top two, Atlantic and, and uh, spotted wolfish, are, are definitely prized good eating fishes. The three species really have a, a wide uh, overlap in their ranges. They're found around uh, the coastal waters uh, and deep waters around uh, Norway, Greenland, Iceland, the Canadian Maritimes and then down into the Gulf of Maine, and as I said, Atlantic wolfish trickling down uh, a little further along our east coast. They do hybridize, the, the Atlantic and the striped wolf, excuse me, the spotted wolfish do hybridize, and that has been replicated in a hatchery. Um, but yet, because they don't have very strong migratory patterns um, and are fairly discreet, there is genetic variation amongst populations. Uh, in the wild, uh, they are found in deep cold waters. Um, for the spotted wolfish, as I said, they're in, in the U.S. waters, they're in the Gulf of Maine. They are very long-lived, very large fish, um, and as a result, reach sexual maturity fairly, what we would consider late, but it's really just, you know, the beginning of their life at seven to ten years. There is no competition from fisheries in either Canadian or U.S. waters. Um, the, the U.S. fisheries uh, listed Atlantic wolfish as a species of concern in 2009, and shut down basically all wolfish fisheries. There was never really a directed fishery. It was more caught in bycatch, but a very marketable bycatch. But now you can't uh, retain any wolfish in US waters. Same is true for Canada. Spotted wolfish uh, uh, are listed as threatened and since 2004 um, have not been able to be landed. They are um, uh, uh, interesting fishes in that they probably have some sort of courtship ritual. They do form bonded pairs and have internal fertilization. Um, the females extrude sticky demersal eggs, which then the male guards. Um, like salmon, they have fairly low fecundity, only about 5,000 eggs per kilogram female. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, their age of sexual maturity is somewhere in around 7 to 10 years. They have been cultivated now for about 30 years, not in the US, but beginning in Russia in the 80s uh, and then followed in Norway. Atlantic wolfish was looked at on a research uh, and development level. Quickly, the researchers switched to spotted wolfish. Spotted wolfish have a faster growth rate um, and are, are an easier species to rear. Uh, Iceland and Canada have also ex uh, played around, uh, more so than played around, with rearing uh, wolfishes, including the hybrid that I mentioned. Currently, there is a multi-country, multi-institutional uh, organization called WolfNet, which um, is promoting wolfish aquaculture. The, the scientists in their, in their aquaculture fields of expertise are working uh, together to further wolf wolfish aquaculture. Um, again, this is mostly spotted now. And then on commercial level, there is one commercial producer uh, in Norway. It's gone through several iterations. It's now called A minor NS. 
Um, but this one company um, is having success producing uh, spotted wolfish. And then in Quebec, Natalie's group did uh, market studies on wolfish, on spotted wolfish, and um, a very large scale pilot operation in 2009 where they produced a half a ton of fish from a um, photo period manipulated and domesticated broodstock there. Um, and there's a, a possibility that commercialization in Canada is in the near future. So I'm gonna just walk you through what we do know um, very uh, generally about um, culturing wolffish. There's quite a lot of published literature out there from the past 30 years. Um, the broodstock, and I guess the take home message is this is a relatively easy species to culture, um, even though we haven't done it in the US. Um, this is a cold water species, so the broodstock uh, prefers temperatures less than eight degrees Celsius. It's a very good osmoregulator, very urohaline at all life history stages, so there's quite a bit of play there in, in the salinity of the water, but generally for the broodstock, it's above 20 parts per thousand. Uh, there is no specific wolfish diet. Um, but they do well um, on a, a commercially um, formulated cold water marine species uh, diet. Right now, the Norwegians are using a scredding vitalis for their, for their broodstock, which you can see is fairly high in protein, maybe a little bit too high in lipid. Um, there haven't been optimal nutritional studies done on wolfish, so that's an area of need. It is a very hardy and disease resistant species and has very low incidence of disease. What few quirks have happened have usually been as a result of uh, temperature regime not being um, optimal uh, in the hatchery. Uh, and there are no vaccines as of yet for wolfish and maybe, maybe they're not needed if they're so disease resistant as well. The broodstock can be manipulated by photo period. They spawn uh, normally to November through February, but they can be uh, manipulated by um, condensing um, the, the season to get a, um, a summer spawner as well. So you can have two batches of brood that are, that are spawning each year. Uh, fertilization methods have been well established. Um, the females, when uh, they get ripe, they have these big pot bellies. And when the, the genital pore exceeds five millimeters, they can, uh, the eggs can be expressed. They can strip the females. Um, male can, uh, males, the milk can be stripped, the sperm can be cryopreserved, um, and fertilization can be used uh, with either fresh milk or the cryopreserved sperm. The, the big issue with, um, with um, fertilization is there needs to be a lot of contact time between the gametes, so on the order of two hours of contact time before eggs are put in incubators. Um, wolfish have very large eggs, much like salmon. They have a very long incubation phase, so that might be the one very different thing from some of the other species that you hear about today, 900 to 950 degree days. Very long, uh, again, with cold water temperatures desired, um, but they do well in the salmon incubators. Um, because of this long incubation period, they do need to be um, disinfected or at least monitored closely for fungal infections. Um, when they hatch out, you're basically hatching a little juvenile fish out. There's a very short larval stage. They're large and well-developed um, uh, newly hatched fishes, uh, and they can go right on to a microparticulate diet, so you don't need to use live feed. Some hatcheries do a co-feeding period, either with artemia or copepods, but it's not necessarily needed, especially if um, those microparticulate diets can get um, formulated specifically for wolf fish. There has been variable survival, though, in that the hatching to, say, 30 days post-hatch stage, and so that's an area that still needs to be uh, investigated. And as the fish grow, they have a preference for colder temperature, so the temperature regime drops in tem um, as they exceed 200 grams. Again, you can um, offer them a, a wide variety of salinities and they'll do fine. And one of the really uh, great things about spotted wolffish is you can pack them in tightly. They do not mind that. They are not aggressive. They are not cannibalistic. Um, and so you can rear them at really high stocking densities. And as they grow larger, you can pack them in even denser. Um, for the U.S. market, it's about a one to three kilo fish that we'd be looking at and a two to three year grow out. The European market is, desires a larger fish, so obviously a longer grow out period. And they're highly adaptable to a bunch of different rearing systems. They've been reared in square and round tanks, in raceways, fairly shallow raceways at that, um, in tanks with shelves to increase more surface area, and even um, some experimental studies using them, uh, growing them out in sea cages. Uh, again, 
pack them in, they, they pile up on top of each other, they don't, they don't evenly disperse in a tank, so um, they do quite well and thrive in that kind of situation. So as I mentioned, there's only one commercial producer right now in Norway, a miner. They anticipate producing 500 metric tons a year. Um, they just recently reinvented themselves, which is why that's anticipated that they'll produce that. Um, there isn't a history of the new company is what the production um, is going to be like. There is no competition from a wild market here on this side of the Atlantic. Whatever uh, wild-caught wolfish winds up in our markets is caught either in Iceland or Norway. The European restaurants fetch um, a really high price for wolfish. I wouldn't expect our American markets would, would tolerate prices quite that high for spotted wolfish. There has been one market study done in uh, the early 2000s in conjunction with um, the, the Canadian studies uh, of rearing spotted wolfish, and it was quite promising that there was a niche market that um, could be established in the U.S., um, primarily in high-end retail um, and also in the mid to high-end restaurant. Those of you who've had wolfish know what I'm talking about when it's, I say it's a really good tasting fish. It's, to me, it's the closest thing to halibut. Um, I like it better than halibut. Halibut's my number two favorite after wolfish. Um, very meaty um, and just very flavorful. The market study did indicate that there's no name recognition for wolfish. Um, in the U.S., sometimes it's marketed as ocean catfish. I don't think that does a justification either, and the fishermen I work with say that's because they have nine lives, that's why we call them catfish. But, um, so obviously there would have to be uh, marketing involved uh, to promote this species in the American market. Not only does it yield a really great tasting filet, but you have other products from wolfish, including uh, leather. So wallets, handbags, shoes, belts um, are all made from <laughs> wolfish hide as well as chew toys for your dog. So it's um, an interesting fish in that there are multi-uses for uh, many of its parts and pieces. So we have it listed as an experimental uh, species uh, here for this talk. Um, there is no U U.S. activity uh, rearing or doing really research and development of spotted wolfish, except for you know what's tinkering around in my head, I guess. But it is technically feasible. We don't have a broodstock or egg supply here in the U.S., but just across the border in Quebec, there is uh, with Natalie's group. Um, so they've got broodstock, lots of studies and, and intellectual knowledge and expertise on raising spotted wolfish. Perhaps they're on the brink of being commercialized. I'll let Natalie address those questions. Um, there is some fine tuning needed, as is, as is the case with all, all species, including nutritional studies, uh, investigating whether uh, vaccines are necessary for wolfish. But we've gotten hardly any competition from the wild, only one other commercial uh, company in the world, um, and the result is a very high end product that can be easily domesticated um, and reared intensively in cold waters. So I would. I, Ask, uh, ask the panel and, and the audience this, so is it really an experimental species or should we list it as technologically feasible and start moving forward here in the U.S.? Thank you. We have time for one quick question as I change the slides. Was your question how, how easy is it to induce spawning? How, how much time? Um, not only was it like, so how, the question is how much time out, uh, out of the normal spawning uh, cycle can you induce it? And it's uh, three, three months or so? And you didn't use any hormones at all? No. Mm -hmm. no. It was better when we started uh, work on So hormones aren't used, but that opens up also another area of study. You know, if you were to use hormones, would you get that much more time too in the spawning cycle? Yes. 